Now, Lindsey Williams was on with us in October, and he said the Middle East is going to have a big crisis and explode into flames. That's what uh, Ken Fromm, who's now died, that we can reveal, the former head of Atlantic Richfield, told him. Fromm also and his other source, the other Mr. X, who I know the name of, but we can't reveal, uh, back in 2008, six months before it happened, he said in six months, oil is going to go from $40 a barrel to 150 It went to 149 Then he said, okay, now it's 149 It's going to drop to 40 It actually went to 35 or so. Now it's going to slowly grow for the next few years, but then uh, it's going to start rocketing up. And then last October, he said within six months to a year, it'll be $150, $200 a barrel. Uh, he then went on uh, from his sources, who were high-level globalists and kind of have a rule. They like to tell you what they're going to do to you. Um, that after the big Middle East destabilization, next would be China, the death of the dollar around 2012. And so there's another four or five months, three or four months here to see if, if uh, his source was 100% accurate. And he's been accurate in almost everything. Uh, but the globalists aren't all powerful. They're not God. Uh, they've, they've only gotten oil up to 105 or so a barrel. Now, will they run it up? Uh, will they run it up uh, to 150 or more? Uh, now, now his source, who lives out of the country most of the time, has been begging him to get on an airplane and travel there and to go to a, quote, special briefing. And uh, we're breaking this information here uh, today. Uh, Lindsay actually, uh, what, a couple days ago, trying to get a hold of us, but he uh, first covered it on Dr. Stan Monteith. We're going to be able to expand into this information during this hour and a little bit into the next hour, but I promise we will get to your calls because I want to hear your questions. But there's no doubt the, the first great war of the 21st century is happening. It's multi-region, multi-continent. They admit they're using Muslim Brotherhood, Al-Qaeda types all over to overthrow the governments. And then fight the governments from Syria uh, to uh, Egypt to now, of course, Libya. And, and all of this is starting to come to a head. And the NATO alliance is really starting to break up. Uh, the Germans pulled out two months ago. We're now three-plus months into this. Italy today, this is big news, uh, said uh, we're not going to be part of this. So, so, so this is huge. The Chinese have come out and said we're dumping all the Treasury bonds. Uh, the Federal Reserve has said we are going to do QE3. Remember they said they wouldn't a month ago. Now they're back saying they will. Further de dollar devaluation. I mean, earth-shattering events are happening. Just like you saw in the build-up to World War One or World War II. I get chills when I talk about this. I mean, this is, it is on, okay? A great time of, 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 of upheaval is upon us and we got a lot out of Bilderberg two weeks ago. We'll see how that matches with the intel Lindsay has. But quite frankly, what we got at Bilderberg last year and this year just absolutely seamlessly fits in. And that's what we got from Tucker. Bilderberg wants 150. I mean, he, he Tucker's even now named the names of who said what in the meetings. They want to bankrupt the planet with high oil prices, but they want to bring down Saudi Arabia. Something sounded crazy in October. The Saudis have now run to China, run to Russia. They're openly saying they're trying to destabilize us. They've handed out 20-something billion in one dole, 34 billion in another. Ten, I mean, they're giving people $10,000, $20,000 payments every few months individually. So that the West can't get them to rise up and overthrow them. Why are they double crossing the Saudis, uh, the, 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 the globalist allies who are horrible? I don't like their government. Why are they double crossing Mubarak? Why are they double crossing Gaddafi who made deals with them six years ago and invested, uh, tens of billions with Goldman Sachs? Why is this happening? Because they need this global meltdown as a pretext to say, oh, we're having a global depression, not because of the fractional reserve banking and the big six mega banks, but because of the Arabs, it's their fault. And see, we've got to go in to cut back the oil prices. And that's exactly what Bilderberg's saying. Now, now, Lindsay, we appreciate you breaking this and really going into it in full detail here today. You have traveled out of the country to meet with the even higher level, you know, even bigger oil company, absolute CEO, former head, uh, who, who's giving you this information and almost everything he said has come true, but out of the gates where he gave us the new briefing, you said in October, six months to a year, 150 or higher, uh, are they going to be able to carry this out because they weren't able to overthrow Saudi Arabia, or what's happening? Yeah, the Mr. X of my book, The Energy Non-Crisis, who is 
still alive, has been asking me to go to a briefing outside the United States of America. Well, I finally picked up my family, and we all went. Many of you have been wondering why you have not heard me on any radio show for probably a month. Now, some of the things that I saw and heard in this briefing, I cannot say on your show, uh, Alex, because if I did, you would probably have the same thing happen to you that one famous man who was on Fox News had happened to him. They relieved him of his job. Fortunately, you're on Genesis Network, so you won't get kicked off. When I came back to the United States of America, I literally wanted to kneel down and kiss the ground. Believe me. Uh, I've never been so glad to be back. And by the way, all of you out there in the listening audience, I did not go outside the United States of America in order to find out if it was some other place I wanted to move to. I am here to be with you to see this entire thing battled out from the beginning to the end. And Alex, I'd like to invite you sometimes to go with me on one of these briefings. You'll come back, I promise you, uh, a different man. Now, the Mr. X of my book, you, you know who he is. Uh, not Mr. Fromm, you know, he passed away about six, seven months ago. But the Mr. X of my book is over 70 years of age. And it's almost as if he has become like Mr. Fromm to the point that, let me just go ahead and tell him everything. I don't care. If you think you can get by with it, do it. So as a result, you... Uh, please, folks, have a pencil and paper handy today because I'm going to give you some facts and figures and statistics and names and dates that have never been given because up until Monday of this week, I didn't even know it myself. When I got back in the country, uh, my Mr. X and I spent a lengthy period of time on the telephone last Friday and then again on Monday of this week, basically going over all of the things that uh, I could say without getting in trouble. Now, Alex, the first thing I want to do today is congratulate you. <clears throat> I don't think you realize just how much you and a number of other radio talk show hosts in the country have uh, have upset the elite. Uh, you have succeeded, and here's the first thing you've succeeded in doing. Because of what you and others like you have done, the elite have decided, and here's the first, this is not a prediction, this is an outright statement. You can take this, I'm not going to say take it to the bank, because don't take anything to the bank, but you can believe this one and enjoy it. There are a few things that are encouraging about what I heard and saw. First of all, because of the American people waking up too rapidly, that the elite are scared to death. Many of you remember that I have said numbers of times on the Alex Jones show that when I lived with the elite of the world for three years, one of the first things I found out was that there's only one thing on the face of the earth they're afraid of. They are scared to death of the masses of people waking up. And stay there. Stay there, them. Lindsay. The key information, glad you're breaking it here. Uh, we're going to come back uh, after break. And uh, we're going to get into the, uh, to the fact that the elite are scared of the awakening. That's the same thing Tucker sources and other sources confirmed out of Bilderberg two weeks ago. Lindsey Williams is our guest, and what he's saying uh, really uh, integrates in with what Jim Tucker has said. Jim Tucker from his Bilderberg sources has been able to say, Berlin Wall will fall next year. It's going to be staged. Margaret Thatcher will be out within two months. She didn't go along with this. George W. Bush is going to endorse in the next three months global warming. People laughed at that. He has predicted because these people steer the planet. They don't totally control it, but they're able to influence it. They're trying to set up a total world government so they do run it. But they certainly run this nation, and they're running it into the ground. But the fact that Germany's pulled out of the invasion, Italy's now pulling out of this new world war they're trying to start... That's exactly what we got from Tucker, is that they are scared to death, they are upset, they know that Europe isn't going to go along uh, with more bailouts. Uh, Lindsay, you you traveled to meet with this high-level globalist, uh, and he said, look, I'm just going to give it all to you. Briefly, why did he, I mean, did you ask him why? And then B, you've got new information. I told you during the break, I know Fox News ran back off because he was going too far. Um, and uh, so now, you know, he's just going to Internet like we do, you know, with the full scoop, I guess. We hope. We'll see what happens. Uh, but I, I don't care. Whatever you were told, lay it out here, buddy. Hit them with both barrels. Go ahead. Congratulations, Alex. You have succeeded. You can call yourself a success. 
Too many Americans are waking up and revolting against the elite system, and as a result, here is the first way in which they've backed off. Gasoline will not go above $5 a gallon. They had planned to take it to 6 to 7 before the summer was over with. I said that on your show back about two months ago. They now have said to me on the phone on Monday morning, this Mr. X of my book, Energy and Oil Crisis, he said, Chaplin, is going to go to no more than $5 in any place across America on through the rest of the So you summer. didn't learn that when you traveled to meet with him? This is a new development. No, no, no. The number of things that we talked about on the telephone uh, after I got back here, and this just happened to be one that he said, yeah, go ahead and say all this you want to, because he said people will enjoy $5 a gallon gasoline. Now, many of you remember whenever I said about two and a half years ago it was $147 a barrel to $50 a barrel, and within three months it took place exactly as they told me it would. But you can count on this also. They have had to back off slightly because too many of you were waking up, and they were fearful that uh, – that the American people were going to revolt. So they, and the first thing they've limited is $5 a gallon gasoline for the rest of this summer. Secondly, my dreams, Alec, have finally come true. Now, this one I want you to go and prove for yourself. Some of it you can get, some of it you cannot. Hope you have pencils and paper. In my book, The Energy Non Crisis, there is a chapter entitled, If Gull Island Doesn't Blow Your Mind, This Will. And oh, by the way, all of you out there, if you want a copy of Energy Non-Crisis and To Seduce a Nation, I don't sell them, but if you want the copies of those books, you can go to Amazon Kindle and get both of them for less than $9 each. So please, I hope you'll read that chapter, If Gull Island Doesn't Blow Your Mind as Well. For 35 years, I have been hoping and, 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 and wishing that what I said in that chapter would come to pass because... Very few people were willing to believe that I actually saw what I saw that day. You ready? Here it is. If that pencil and paper is ready, uh, you, you want to write this down. The largest oil rig ever built on the face of the earth within the past few weeks has been moved to Prudhoe Bay, Alaska. Write it down. You're going to hear this talked about. You think the Gulf of Mexico was big? You think the strike that they hit in the Gulf of Mexico was something phenomenal? You haven't seen anything yet. I was in that room that day 35 years ago. I saw the largest oil pool on the face of the earth discovered and ordered classified within 24 hours' time. They are finally about to open it up. And when I tell you in a moment why they're going to open this up, you are going to be startled. Okay, I'll give you the name of it and the place and what they're going to do so that you can prove it for yourself and know I'm right. They call it the Liberty Rig, L-I-B-E-R-T-Y. Biggest oil rig ever built on the face of the earth, and it is placed right near West Dock on the Arctic Ocean, approximately two miles from what I call Gull Island in my book, The Energy Non Crisis. And they are going to drill, listen to this, I mean, I still am dumbfounded at what I heard. They are going to drill eight miles. Did you hear this? Now, this was told me just the, uh, just the other day. They're going to drill eight miles with this biggest rig ever built on the face of the earth into, they've named it, by the way, I call it Gull Island in my book because that's all they called it back in those days. They're calling it today the Lisbon Zone, not Lisbon Field, Lisbon Zone. Be sure and quote it correctly. And they're going to drill eight miles out and hit what I call Gull Island in my book. All right, stay and there. Stay there. Uh, we'll break down what Mr. X told you they're going to do on the other side.